Well, Heidi Ho, Joe Blow, it's that time again. And this is Caleb Jones. And this is the Alpha Male 2.0 podcast. Once again, I apologize for the audio quality. I'm in transit as I record this. Because I uh, I travel a lot and I do a lot of things and I like to multitask. I've explained that on past podcasts. One of my poor philosophies. And this is not necessarily an alpha male 2.0 specific philosophy. It really isn't. It is certainly helpful and very complementary and compatible with the alpha male 2.0 lifestyle that I endorse and teach. But this is more of a Caleb's opinion, Caleb's personal philosophy. I have written about this philosophy at length at my blogs. One big article in particular that ended up being very controversial, which are kind of my favorite articles to write, especially when I know I'm right. (laughs) And that is that everything in your life is your fault. Everything in your life. Everything in your life is your fault. Even if a negative condition in your life is something you think is not your fault, A, you're probably wrong because if you look back on the sequence of events that introduced that item into your life, we can pinpoint it to something you did or something you did not do. Therefore, it is your fault. And even if you can find the rare, rare 1% exceptions to the rule on something that would not be your fault, and an example of that, people will say, well, Kayla, what about little kids who get cancer? Is that their fault? Again, that is the fraction of a 1% exception. How many kids do you know who are dying of cancer? Thank you very much for proving my point. But not only is that a bizarre exception to the rule, it is still up to you on how you respond to those very rare events that are not your fault. And frankly, the vast, 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 vast majority of you listening to the sound of my voice can't even pinpoint one of those. Everything in your life is probably your fault to some degree or another. Now that's a very big topic. I am not gonna go into detail about that particular topic. Instead, I'm gonna give you a slice of that topic, a pizza slice of that topic, and I'm gonna zoom in on that pizza slice. And that is, all of the drama and problems you have from women in your woman life, or God forbid, a particular woman in your woman life because you're monogamous or de facto monogamous. Throughout my 13, 14 year tenure as Black Dragon slash Caleb Jones, I have received, as you might imagine, hundreds if not thousands of emails from men who are experiencing problems in their relationships specifically drama from the women that they're dating. And whenever I read these emails, I am kind of saddened to see that the implication behind these emails is, wow, what a crazy bitch she is. Wow, she's so fucking crazy. Wow, she has, you know, borderline personality disorder. Wow, what a fucking bitch. Wow, women are vindictive. Why are women like this? And it's all about her, 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 her. Her, her, her. Now here's the problem. Any drama that you receive from a woman, any drama, I mean this now, any drama that you put up with is your fault. It's not her fault. What, wait a minute, wait a minute, Kayla. How can you say that? She's the one being a bitch. No, 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 no. Who's tolerating this behavior? Who's putting up with this behavior? You are. So, If you have a scenario where you're getting regular, repeated drama from a woman in your life, that is 100% your fault. And when you complain about a woman giving you drama, that is 100% your fault. That is on you. That is not her, that's you. It's not her because she's doing what you're letting her do. She's doing what you're allowing her to do. You're letting her get away with it so she's getting away with it. That's human nature. That's how human beings are designed. More specifically, that is how women are designed. Women like to do drama, right? It's part of being a girl, right? Right, right, right. So if you say to a woman through your actions, not your words, but through your actions, hey, you can give me drama and I'll scream back at you and yell at you and we'll fight. And we'll fight for 45 minutes or an hour. And then I'll see you again next week. And we can fight again. And then I'll see you again next week. And then I'll see you again and again and again and again and again. Of course, of course, she's going to keep giving you drama because that's what you're asking her to do. 
you are telling her through your, not again, not through your words, but through your actions, you are telling her, give me all the drama you want, sweetheart, and I'll keep seeing you. And I will keep giving you attention, which is, as I've talked about many times in my books and my blogs, the number one thing women crave from men, which is attention. So when a woman is screaming at you and calling you an asshole or what have you, and you scream back at her and call her a bitch and tell her to stop it, what are you doing? You're giving her attention. You think you're kicking her ass and you're putting her in her place and you're laying down the law. That's what you think with your stupid man brain. That's what you think you're accomplishing. When in fact, you're just feeding the beast. You're giving her that thing that she craves from you the most. So when you give her that thing, what is she going to do? More of it. More drama. So this is what happens in most typical relationships. Matter of fact, the vast majority of relationships are like this. The woman has had a bad day at work or, or a bad day or something happens with her friend or she's on her period or she got in an argument with her mom or whatever the fuck. Or maybe you did something wrong. You made some kind of mistake and pissed her off. So she starts screaming at you. And I don't want to exaggerate. Maybe she's not literally screaming at you, but she is quite angry with you. She's clearly agitated. She's raising her voice. She's calling you names or at least calling you, you know, saying that you did dumb things. Maybe she's threatening you. I'm never going to see you again. Whatever that is, it's all drama. She's doing that. And you respond with your own drama. Oh, I didn't do that. What are you talking about? And then you fight. And now you're arguing. By giving her attention, what does she do? She increases the drama. She starts giving you even more drama. And you're like, God damn it. And now you respond to the more drama. And it becomes this self-building cycle. It becomes this evil circle where it expands and expands. And the drama gets worse and worse and worse. And finally, at the end of that, you throw your hands in the air. And you're, you send me an email about what a bitch she is. That's all your fault. All that shit was your fault. All of that shit was your fault. Not hers. She's operating the way nature has designed her to operate. That's all she's doing. You are providing the framework for her to give you that drama. The drama is because of you. You are doing this, not her. You are doing it. Now, let me give you the opposite example, me. I don't have drama for women in my life. I don't have it. And I'm married. Holy fuck. I live with a woman full time. I live with a woman and I still don't have drama. Name one guy you have ever met in your life. <laughs> who has been living with a woman for three years. Uh, Pink Firefly and I are about to celebrate our three year anniversary of living together. We've been together six, uh, together three, in about, literally, in about a week, we celebrate our three year anniversary. We don't have drama. We don't have it. She doesn't give me drama. Now, does she never give me drama? Of course not. When you live with a woman, sometimes you're gonna have some. But it is extremely rare, and when it happens, it's very unusual, and it only lasts a few seconds, and then it's over. Day to day, week to week, month to month, we don't have drama. If we have a disagreement, we handle it like normal, rational human beings. The rare times we have a disagreement, it's very rare, and that's it. We don't have drama. But prior to Pink Firefly, as you know if you've read my stuff for a long time, I didn't have drama from MLTRs, FBs, any woman I dated. And if I ever did, what would I do? You guys who know my content, you know my content well, you know what I'm about to say. If a woman ever gives me drama, instant, soft, Next, I instantly remove myself from her life for anywhere from one to seven days. I don't contact her at all. And then after the end of the next period, I circle back to her and continue as if nothing happened. Instead of responding to her drama with attention, I withdraw my attention, which is the most painful thing you can do to a woman. See, you think the most painful thing you could do to a woman is to scream at her and call her a bitch and call her a slut and tell her to shut the fuck up. No, wrong. I didn't say she likes that. That's not the most painful thing. It's not because you're giving her attention. The most painful thing you can do to a woman who is in a relationship with you is to vanish out of her life for several days and not respond to any of her contacts. That will drive her insane. It works extremely well. Now, this isn't a podcast on soft nexting. I have multiple articles about that at my blogs. I've written about that in great detail in my book, specifically the Ultimate Open Relationships Manual at haveopenrelationships.com. Uh, I have did just a YouTube video about it, et cetera, and so forth. So we're not talking about soft nexting here. What we're talking about is I, unlike you, have the balls and the strategic state of mind to not tolerate any drama from women. And because I don't tolerate it, I don't get any. 
See how easy that is? Have you ever, you guys who've been reading my stuff for, you know, five years, seven years, 10 years, 13 years, have you ever seen me complain about drama I'm getting from any woman in my life? No, I don't have that problem. <laughs> and on the rare cases I've had that problem, I do a soft next, I'm gone, I circle back, drama's gone, she's a sweetheart, and we continue, and it's all good. I don't get drama because I don't fucking tolerate it. You tolerate it, that's why you get it. But Caleb, I live with a woman, and, and you said you can't soft next to a woman when you live with her, and that's correct. When you deal with drama with a woman you live with, instead of soft nexting, you have to use what I call the drama corrective procedure. I lay that out in the ultimate open marriage manual at open-marriage.com. I have an entire chapter on how to handle drama when you live with a woman, because that's correct. You cannot do a soft next when you live with a woman. It's not possible. When you live with a woman full time anyway, you can't do it. So even then there are things you can do. But the bottom line is, I don't have that problem because I don't tolerate it. You have that problem because you fucking tolerate it. It's 100% your fault. Now, let's talk about why you tolerate it. Oh, <laughs> you don't wanna go here. I can already see you bristling. Oh shit, here we go. That's right, motherfucker, here we go. Let me tell you why you tolerate it and I don't tolerate it. Reason number one, you are probably monogamous. Either you are legitimately monogamous in that you've promised to not have sex with other women, or you are de facto monogamous in that you haven't verbally promised her that you're not gonna have sex with other women, but you're only having sex with one woman because you're a lazy fuck. Because you're lazy. There's this one girl, you see her every once in a while, and you go, eh, that's good enough. Which basically means you are monogamous. So when you are monogamous, de facto or literal, it doesn't matter, you are gonna be very hesitant to soft next or next or dump or do anything with your only source of sex, right? Right, matter of fact, whenever I talk about soft nexting, I immediately get a bunch of objections. And you know who the objections are always from? Every time I talk about this, the objections are always from the monogamy guys. They go, whoa, 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 you mean not see her for a week? Bu, 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 bu. Yeah, exactly. You won't get laid for a week. She might leave you forever and then you won't get laid at all because you're fucked because you're monogamous. Right, when you are dating multiple women at all times like I have for the past 13, 14 years, then you have the balls because you have the redundancy to next whoever you need, or in worst case scenarios, to dump whoever you need. But if you're only seeing one woman right now, which is really fucking stupid, which is completely antithetical to alpha male 2.0, that's beta male bullshit. If you're only seeing one woman, then she kind of has you by the balls, doesn't she? I've talked about this ad infinitum over the years on all the negatives when men are monogamous and or only having sex with one woman. And one of the many negatives is, yeah, she could yell at you, call you a fucking asshole, be a total prick to you, and you're gonna put up with it, aren't you? Because she's the only girl in your life and you have no other options. So like the little beta that you are, you're gonna just keep putting up with her drama and complaining about it. I don't have that problem. You know why I don't have that problem? I have not been monogamous for 13 years. The last time I was monogamous was when I was traditionally monogamously married in my first marriage a billion years ago. Since 2007, so 13 years, almost 14 years as of this recording, almost 14 years I have not been monogamous. I have always, always, always been having sex with at least two women and that was very rare for me. My bare minimum is three women at all times. It is rare that I only have two. Matter of fact, I can't remember the last time I only had two. I'd have to go look it up in my spreadsheets, honestly. I, I'm always having sex with three women. And there's a number of reasons I do that. And one of the key reasons is, if any one of these women give me any shit, I can eject that woman from my life and my sex life continues. Even if I were to get a divorce from my wife, Pink Firefly, and I hope I don't, I love her to death. But even if that were to happen, guess what? My sex life would continue unabated because I have always have at least two FBs on the side that I see on a weekly basis in addition to her. Make sense? So now I don't fear if a woman gives me drama and I have to soft next her or in Pink Firefly's case do the drama corrective procedure, which I virtually never have to do these days because she's been trained. <laughs> oh, she's gonna hate if she hears that. But you know what I'm saying? She's used to my system now. It's not something I have to do with her. But if I had to do it with her, I don't fear it because there is no one woman who owns my balls and owns my dick because I'm only having sex with one. I don't do that. 
the next reason that you're putting up with this. Maybe you are not monogamous, and maybe, thank God, you're having sex with more than one woman. Good on you. Well done. But one of the reasons you're not doing this is you think she's really hot, and you think she's the hottest girl you can get, and you are wrong. Now, that is a very big topic. I have discussed that at numerous articles at my blogs as well as in my books. That is not only a very stupid beta male thing to think, it is factually and it is objectively and factually incorrect. If you're having sex with a hot girl, you can have sex with another hot girl. It might take you a few months to get a new hot girl, that's true, but you can do it. This is not the last hot girl you're ever gonna fuck in your entire life, you moron. That's not how this works. And what you're thinking is, well, yeah, I mean, I'm seeing three different girls, but this is the hottest one, she's really hot. See, she's a nine, and my other two girls are both sixes. So if I next her, oh no, I mean, I mean, I may never see her again. And, and then I gotta be stuck with sixes for the rest of my life. No, dumbass, you go get another nine. By the way, separate side point here, but this is true. You don't wanna be in a scenario, and I've written articles about this. And I've talked about this in my books. You don't wanna be in a scenario where you have multiple women you're seeing and only one of them is attractive to you. Only one is hot and all the rest are average or ugly. That's bad. I mean, that's not as bad as monogamy, but it's in the same zone. Because of your perception on how attractive she is kind of owns you by the balls. As I've said many times, I made a pact with myself 13 years ago when I entered into this world that I would only have sex with women I considered at least eights or higher. That I considered at least eights or higher. The one in 10 scale is completely subjective. Now, why did I do that? Now, one reason is I like to have sex with attractive women. But the other reason I did that is I never wanted any one woman to have that kind of power over me. I never wanted to have one particular woman out of the women I was seeing to have the power where I would go, oh, well, oh, shit, I better not next her because then she won't see me and I'll be stuck with all these ugly girls. I never, ever, 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 ever wanted to be in that place. And even during the times where I, over the last you know, 13 years, I haven't done this lately, but over the last 13 years where I did dip below eights and hooked up with sixes or sevens, it was the sixes or sevens who were the exception. So all the other women were eights and nines, sometimes tens, although that's very rare, mostly eights or nines, and the six or the seven was the exception for whatever reason I was doing back then. <laughs> I can tell you a story, but that was the exception. So again, I had multiple women who were attractive, so none of the attractive women could get me into a corner where I would be nervous about nexting her so I didn't have to put up with her fucking drama. Make sense? The third reason that you might be doing this is that you're lazy. Maybe you do have several hot girls, but you're lazy. You're like, I don't wanna next her because, man, if she breaks up with me, I gotta go back on Tinder, and I don't wanna go back on Tinder right now. I'm busy with my work, and I'm, gonna, I'm traveling, and da 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 excuse, 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 beta male bullshit. You're lazy, you're complacent. You can't get lazy, you can't get complacent. Uh, the price you pay for the alpha male 2.0 lifestyle, the greatest lifestyle the modern man can live without being a multi-billionaire. The price you pay is you can't be complacent. You have to always be on. Now, over time, if you follow my lifestyle structures and my dating structures, you will build what I call the roster, where you've had numerous women that you've had sex with at least twice, who you can resurrect very quickly in case any of your women leave. I have that, I've had that for years. It is very rare I need to go back to the dating sites, and usually when I do, I do it for a particular reason, not because I can't find a woman, because I have such a big roster. Over time, you will have this too, and that's the objective. If you don't have that, start working on it, so then you won't worry about nexting any women. The last possible reason that you're doing this, and there is a percentage of you who falls in this category, not most of you, most of you are not in this category that I'm about to describe, but there is some of you in this category, some of you more extroverted guys, some of you more emotional or passionate guys, and that is that you kinda like drama. You kinda like it. It makes you feel validated. It makes you feel human to get in touch with all these negative emotions. If that's you, there's not much I can do to help you. Uh, I don't even know if I can help you. Either that's just the way you are or you need to see a therapist. I don't really have any easy answers for you. I am the opposite of that. I can't stand drama. I don't want even one second of it. I have talked about in my books that there's basically four kinds of people. I'll run through the four really quick. The first type are drama queens. And these are people who love drama, they enjoy it. And men can be drama queens, usually they're women, but there are men who are in this category, not very many, there's a small percentage, maybe 10% of men who are drama queens, they love having drama. And if they don't have drama, they will go out and seek it out and create it 
so they can have drama again to feel good about themselves or to feel human or to satisfy whatever neuroses they have. That's drama queens. Then there are what's called drama mitigators. Drama mitigators don't like drama, but they don't mind it. They're, it's not a big deal to them. And when I talk about not having drama, they get kind of confused. They're like, what's wrong with drama? So who cares you have drama? So what? It's part of having a relationship. It doesn't really matter. It's no big deal. These men tend to be Hispanic men. A lot of European men fall in this category. Some American men, it depends on the personality. They don't like drama. They don't seek it out like the drama queen, but they don't mind. If they have drama on a regular basis, it really doesn't bother them. They hate it. They don't like it, but they're just like, ah, so what? The third category are drama tolerators. These are, this is the typical guy. Most guys are in this category. These are the typical beta male type guys. They hate drama, but they put up with it for all the reasons I said, mostly because they're fucking betas. They have one-itis. They're monogamous. They're lazy, whatever. Or they're just stupid. <laughs> A few of those guys. Or they're consumed with kind of more traditional societal programming. These are the guys who say, well, of course you have drama if you're married. That's part of being married, which is false. I'm married, I don't have drama, so false. So they hate drama just as much as I do, but they put up with it. They put up with it and they bitch about it. And in fact, you are probably in that category, statistically speaking. Hopefully you're not, but you might be. The last category are drama haters, which is the category I'm in. These are men who hate drama and want literally nothing to do with it. And as soon as a woman gives them drama, instant soft necks, they boot her to the curb, even if she is hot, even if they love her to death, even if she's amazing, they still do this because they don't want any drama in their lives. By the way, to be very clear, I've gotten this question. Hey, Caleb, have you ever nexted Pink Firefly like when you guys were dating? When you guys were like really serious and in love? Yes. Now, fortunately, I only had to do it twice. And then she learned very quickly. <laughs> That's the beauty of the soft next. Women figure it out really quick. Normal women. If you have a psycho, then you may have to next her over and over and over again. And if that's the case, you need to do what's called a hard next and break up and terminate the relationship forever. Again, if you have to repeatedly have drama with a woman, you need to stop seeing that fucking woman and go see someone else. Otherwise, it's your fault. But the answer is yes. Yes, I have nexted women who I really cared about. Not often. Uh, the woman before Pig Firefly, HBM, the uh, girlfriend I had before, a few years before her, I had to next, I think, definitely once. I think I had to next her twice. Same thing. Over a you know, five-year period, I had to next her twice. And so, yes, just because a woman is serious, even if she is your OLTR, not living together OLTR, your girlfriend OLTR, you can and should still soft next her if she gives you drama. Soft nexting is not just for women you are in casual relationships with. You can soft next FBs, although you rarely need to because FBs don't care about you enough <laughs> to give you drama, believe it or not. I mean, it happens, but it's pretty rare. Certainly you can soft next MLTRs and certainly you can soft next OLTRs. Absolutely. I don't care how amazing she is. I don't care how unique you think she is. I don't care how hot you think she is. I don't give a rat fuck how much you love her or think she's great. I don't care if she's the mother of your children. I don't give a fuck. Soft next. And if you don't soft next, all the subsequent drama you receive from that woman is your fault. By the way, if you refuse to soft next because you're getting drama, you know, you know what else that means? You have one itis. That's what that means. You have one itis. You are struck with one itis and that's on you. That's not her fault, is it? That's on you. I don't get one itis. I've talked about this before, how I can be in love, completely in love and still not have one itis. I don't get one itis. I haven't had one itis in 20 years. So I can soft next anybody, and I have, and I certainly will again at some point. If it's not Pink Firefly, hopefully it's not, it'll be one of my FBs, because I don't have the fear and the scarcity mindset and the lifestyle where I fear this stuff. I don't put up with drama. I like being happy, and you can't be happy and experience drama at the same time. Alpha Male 2.0 is about what? Long-term consistent masculine happiness. That is not possible if you're getting drama from women on a semi-regular basis. And the only way to not get that drama is to one, don't date high drama women. I mean, we didn't even discuss that in this podcast, but that's a component of this. And two, don't tolerate any drama from any woman. By the way, a woman can be very high quality and still give you drama. Uh, high quality women are still women. And women still have bad days and women can still have dramatic days. So don't think for a minute, oh, she's really cool, so she'll never give me drama. Wrong-o. She can still give you drama. <laughs> Hopefully not often, 
but she still can, which means you still need to soften it. And or other corrective procedures if you live with her. Cool? Cool. Think about this. Next time that woman you're dating is screaming at you and giving you shit and you're putting up with it. You're arguing back at her instead of soft nexting her, which is what you should be doing. Think about this. Next time you have this uh, urge to send me an email or leave a comment on one of my YouTube videos. Hey, Caleb, I'm with this girl and she's screaming at me and calling me an answer. What, do I, what the fuck's wrong with this bitch? Uh, nothing's wrong with that bitch. You're the bitch. It's your fault. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. And I'm not exaggerating. Think about it very carefully. You decide how much drama is in your life from women. You decide. No one else decides. Just you. Cool? Cool. And I say this with love. I want to help you. That's why I'm here. I know I'm yelling at you, but sometimes I got to do that. Because sometimes I got to snap some of you fuckers out of your days that you're in. Don't tolerate drama from women. I will see you again very soon. Have fun. Bye.